Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. It was the worst possible result for teams looking for a missing vintage biplane. This afternoon they located the scattered wreckage on a ridge line near Lake Barumba. All six people aboard confirmed dead. The AGL Action Rescue Helicopter discovered the wreckage by air this afternoon and was able to land 200 metres away. Search crews and paramedics continued to the site on foot. The Australian Maritime Safety Authority has described the crash as high impact, the plane virtually disintegrating when it hit the ground near Barum Dam, south of Gympie. It's no longer a search, it's not a rescue, uh, this is a matter of uh, working with police um, to, uh, to begin the investigation process. The aircraft was last seen Monday afternoon, circling a valley north of Lake Barumba in cloud cover. Soon after, the plane's distress signal was activated. On board was pilot Des Porter, his wife Kath and two other couples, close friends of the Porters. Search authorities this afternoon notified the families of all those aboard of the grim discovery. Recovery efforts will continue tomorrow. Hayley Robertson, QUT News. A family court judge has ordered four sisters involved in an international custody battle to return to their father in Italy. The girl's mother shed tears as Justice Colin Forrest delivered his decision, dismissing her appeal to keep the girls in Australia. Today's decision is the culmination of months of anticipation. Are you confident the judge will rule in your favour today? Last week, following a string of failed appeals, the girl's mother launched a last-ditch application in the family court to discharge an order for the girls to return to their father in Italy. In 2010, the four sisters travelled to Australia with their mother for a one-month holiday, and they've stayed ever since. In May this year, the girls went into hiding to evade an existing court ruling to have the custody dispute settled in Italy. Family law experts say judges are bound by the Hague Convention on Child Abduction when considering custody disputes. Under the Hague Convention, the best interests of the children are not the paramount consideration. It's more um, whether there has been a wrongful removal of the children. Ms Avizio says the case could potentially change the precedent in family law cases. If Australia is seen as not upholding their obligations under the Convention, then that may have an impact when we have an Australian child abducted to another country. The family court has been at the epicentre of this custody dispute, a battle that's attracted worldwide media attention. The Department of Communities will accompany the girls back to Italy, but it's not known when that will happen. Zach Street, QUT News. Consumers may be paying too much for electricity because they can't access information about the pricing policies of power companies. The comments were made during a Senate hearing into electricity prices in Brisbane. The Senate committee is taking submissions from consumers and interested parties as part of its brief to look into the key causes of electricity price increases over recent years and those likely in the future. That includes looking into transmissions and investment decisions in the industry and the impacts of those decisions on prices. One Big Switch made its submission at the Brisbane hearing today. One Big Switch is a for-profit organisation that negotiates with power companies for the lowest prices by encouraging large blocks of consumers to switch electricity suppliers. The community network organisation says one of its main aims is to help consumers by providing them with relevant data and technology so they can make their own price comparisons. Industries hold data on you, that's very powerful. Consumers need to get that data so they can use it in their interests and data in the future is what electricity is going to be all about. Although this campaign is the first of its kind, it could be the beginning for Australians in understanding and having control over their electricity bills. The Senate committee will hold its next hearing in Canberra early next week and make its final report next month. Laura Finlayson, QT News. The federal government says it will provide $3.3 million in emergency funding for the Queensland Tenant Advice and Advocacy Service. The state government recently announced that it would cut funding to the body from the end of this month. Currently, the Tenants Advisory Service is mainly funded using the interest generated by tenants bonds, which are administered by the Queensland Government. But from the end of this month, Campbell Newman's Liberal National Party government will cut off that source of funds as part of his budget tightening. That has prompted the Federal Government to step in with alternative funding arrangements. The Federal Housing Minister says that will be a temporary measure and says the Newman Government should take back the funding responsibility for the service. Minister O'Connor said the Federal Government will make sure that Newman's reinstating of the funding 
will be a condition of any future state and Commonwealth agreements. Any future negotiation between Queensland Government and the Commonwealth in relation to housing will have to ensure that there is an ongoing commitment from the Queensland Government to provide such services. Tenants Union Queensland says the Federal Government's move has been a great relief for all those involved in tenant services and advocacy. It's a little bit less than what would have uh, what was um, in the program last year, but it is uh, it, an, an absolute lifeline for tenants. It will keep the services going. The State Minister for Public Housing also welcomes the move, but says he hopes the Gillard government is not planning to take the money from other Queensland programs to pay for it. Laura Churchill, QT News. The Brisbane Roar launched their A-League football season today, pulling a Royal Flying Doctor service aircraft. The ultimate tug-of-war challenge will be seen again at this weekend's first match of the season in Perth. The aircraft weighing approximately 5.5 tonnes was pulled collectively by the team, weighing in at 1.5 tonnes. Later, three teammates took the challenge to the next level. No, it is not easy. It was really hard to, to pull a plane, and, uh, uh, but uh, I can see now the boys are very strong and they are, they are ready for, for the game. Despite having new coach Rado Vitasic on board, expectations for another successful season are high. New additions to the team, midfielder Ben Halloran and striker Don Hyun Do, should add extra depth to the team. For us, it's not important to look uh, just one player. For us, it's important really to look of us, what we're doing, what, what we can uh, reach the next level, how we train, how we prepare for the games. and. Uh, uh, I think um, that uh, the boys are very ready. We have a tough uh, pre-season, a lot of games, and I think we are ready. The Raw have added to their already potent attack with two new strikers, and Barisha says that he is excited about the prospect for the team. Matilda Butler, QUT News. Good evening. Time to take a look at the weather. And it was mostly fun and sunny around Brisbane today, where the temperature reached a top of 25. And around the southeast. There were a few showers on the Gold and Sunshine coasts, tops of 24, while Ipswich was mostly sunny and reached 27 degrees. Around the capital cities tomorrow, Sydney and Melbourne can expect a sunny day with a top of 28, Canberra, Canberra will be windy and a top of 25, and Adelaide should be sunny and 28. More rain is expected for North Queensland tomorrow. Showers are forecast for Cairns, Townsville and Mackay, with temperatures in the late 20s. The weather is looking pretty good in Brisbane over the next few days, with mostly sunny skies expected and temperatures getting up to the late 20s by the time the weekend comes around. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.